Okay, so hey, welcome to the shop. Uh, we're working on a boat. Hey, today we're going to handle a special request. Um, some time ago I put out a video about uh, galvanic isolators and in the comments uh, for that video there was a motion made and seconded for a video about isolation transformers. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. And uh, I've been really excited. I really wanted to get this video out, but I've been kind of holding off on it because um, I was just certain that we were going to pick up a job uh, doing a new install on a isolation transformer, but it hasn't happened yet. So, uh, you know, I was hoping to have one for show and tell, but it, we haven't picked that job up yet. So what I did was I uh, went to our uh, special effects department and I had them put us together a non-working model so we have something for show and tell. So uh, let's slide on over there, see what they got for us, and um, we'll talk about the isolation transformers today. Okay, special effects department, what do you have for me? Super Isolation Transformer 2000! Okay, so this is what they put together for us. And you know, honestly, um, glitter and googly eyes uh, notwithstanding, uh, this is a pretty good analog for a isolation transformer, it really. Size, shape, eh, it's pretty close, it's about right. Um, what is a uh, isolation transformer to most of us? It's a big black box that something comes in, something goes out. There's a uh, magical process that goes on inside. Who knows what it is? Uh, actually, it, there is a technical term for what happens inside of one of these things, and it's called uh, it's JFM. It's freaking magic. But uh, anyway, let's uh, let's go to the board, and we'll talk about what's inside of one of these things, um, how it works, and why it's a good idea on our boat. Okay, so what is inside this black box of an isolation transformer that makes it so wonderful for us? Well, let's just talk about what's inside. What What is a transformer? Oh, a transformer is a little like this. Uh, this is just a fairly small one we had laying around the shop. And uh, you see there's some windings here. There's a primary and secondary windings and a big, very heavy steel core that they go around. And that is drawn out like this. So we have a set of windings, which is our primary, and we have another set of windings, which is our secondary. <clears throat> now the beauty of these things is, is that we say isolation transformer, we've isolated our boat from the dock. There is no physical, mechanical, electrical connection between the boat and the dock, so we're isolated. We send 240 volts in on the primary, we get 240 volts out on the secondary. So you might say, well, how does that happen? There's no connection. How, how do we, how does energy go without being connected to something? Well, it's induction. What's happening is as our current is flowing through our primary here, alternating back and forth, we're creating a magnetic field. And that magnetic field is being transferred to this side. So whatever is happening over here is happening over here without being physically connected. It's, it's pretty cool. Okay, so one of the really neat things we can do with the transformer is we can use the transformer to vary the voltages on our output side. So this is this is pretty neat. Say, for example, on the primary side, which is our 50 amp, 240 volt short cord. So between this point and this point, we will measure 240 volts. On the output side of our transformer, this point to this point, we will measure 240 volts. There. Also, because it is as long as the number of windings are the same on the primary and the secondary, same number of windings on either side, what goes in here is going to be the same coming out over there. Now we can uh, we can use this to, if we add some extra windings down here, we can increase the voltage on the secondary side. If we decrease the number of windings on the secondary side, we can lower the voltage. So we can add some windings, we can get a boosting transformer, we can take away windings, we can get a we can reduce the voltage coming out of there, which is handy for us because over here we have 240 volts coming in on our primary side. We have our <coughs> magnetic induction going to our secondary side and we're producing 240 on this side. But, you know, I got some 110 stuff on, excuse me, 120 stuff on my boat that needs to be powered through this thing. So what do we do? We come right to the halfway point in our windings 
and we've reduced the number of windings on our secondary side with our neutral and now we have 120 and 120 there so it's a it's a neat thing because we don't need a neutral on this side now our secondary side of the transformer has become the power source and we also attach like our neutral to ground connection here on the secondary side of the transformer on the boat and that's a really important thing because now our AC safety ground is contained within our boat. On the primary side, our AC safety ground is attached to a shield between the windings of the primary and secondary sides. So there's actually no physical, mechanical, electrical connection between the dock and your boat. And uh, we'll talk about why this uh, is such a great thing for, for us. Okay, so how does this help us? What does this do for us? Well, in one, uh, if we have a boosting transformer and we have some extra windings here, an automatic boosting transformer, we pull into a marina that says maybe their, uh, yeah, their voltage isn't quite high enough. It's you know, down around 200 instead of being 240. Well, our automatic boosting transformer will bring our voltage up and make our appliances on board a whole lot happier. And it does that without us thinking about it. Also, uh, when we were talking about the uh, galvanic isolator video, uh, you know, we discussed how when you plug your short cord in and you're through your AC safety ground, well now your boat's bonding system, your cathodic protection is being shared across the marina and if there's a problem somewhere, uh, you know, your boat could suffer from that. So by bringing our AC safety ground to the secondary side of the transformer, we've eliminated that connection. Now our AC safety ground is not connected to the dock and we can't possibly be sharing our anodes or our zincs with the rest of the marina. <clears throat> Probably the greatest thing about these is, uh, like in the last video, when um, we talked about the AC ground fault, uh, we discussed how if we have a AC ground fault on a boat but we do not have a functioning AC safety ground on the dock, uh, the current's going to go into the water and it can, it can injure people. But by keeping our AC safety ground on board our boat, we can control this. We put this in, we know it's good. So now our AC safety ground stays with inside the boat. Now, we can't, uh, by doing this, we're not going to put current in the water and we're not going to trip ground fault breakers because it's all contained right here. Now that's not to say that if uh, somebody like me comes on your boat and does a survey for ground fault and says, well, you've got 20 amps of ground fault, ground fault current, uh, well, we'll just slap in a transform and off we go. No, you still have a ground fault to contend with. Uh, you know, this is not a silver bullet for all ground faults. If there's a fault on the boat, it needs to be resolved. Uh, this is just a safety feature. Okay, so let's talk about the pros and cons of, uh, of an isolation transformer on a boat. Uh, first, the pros or the benefits. Um, the first one and the most important one is it makes our boat safer uh, by bringing our AC safety ground back on board the boat and keeping it within our boat. Uh, we've made our boat a whole lot safer. We, uh, with this arrangement, we're, we've reduced the chances that we're ever going to put any electricity in the water and hurt somebody. Uh, the second is galvanic isolation. Uh, by doing our AC safety ground this way, we're not connected to the dock anymore, and therefore we are not sharing our, uh, our, our anodes or our zincs with the rest of the marina. So, <clears throat> we also, uh, we can you know, take advantage of the boosting feature uh, if you choose to get a boosting transformer, because now if we come to a marina and the voltage isn't quite up to 240, well, our transformer will come online and boost our voltage back up to where it should be, and our appliances are going to be a whole lot happier about that. <coughs> now, the cons, um, these things are big, and they are heavy. They can also be expensive because, uh, you know, there's several different manufacturers out there, and you get a good, better, best, and, uh, you know, according to your budget, and they hum. So why do transformers hum? Because they don't know the words.
actually. Transformers hum or buzz because of AC current. The alternating current causes the steel core to rapidly change shape. And that's the hum. I wouldn't do that if I were you. Okay, so that's the real reason that I Transformers hum. Uh, so we have to take that into consideration when we're planning our install because uh, we don't want to put a humming transformer under our, under our bunk. It's going to drive you nuts, believe me. They also get hot, so they need to have some ventilation around them. And we don't want to put them on something that is going to act as a sounding board and amplify that hum. So we have to take all these things into consideration when we're doing our install. But uh, that is our... Uh, that's our show on isolation transformers. Uh, if you've got a question about this or anything else that you find on your boat you might be curious about, you can put that into the comments and uh, we will try and generate some content and answer your question. So uh, until next time, uh, keep working on your boat.